Oh, hi. It's been a while. We're back from our hiatus. Things have changed quite a bit since we last made a video. We took our time off to reflect on our content, absorbed what's been happening around the world, took your feedback and incorporated some of the ideas to create something more than just our nerd talk. So, new format, new office, a fresh experience. That's our side of the story. What's yours? But what is a story, exactly? What makes a story engaging? Why does it draw us in? Why do we tell them? How do we tell them? How many types of stories are there? Old tales spoken around a fire, cave drawings, a fisherman's yarn about the biggest fish he's ever caught, epics, poems, novels, episodes, a cinematic universe, a knock-knock joke. A knock-knock joke. Does a knock-knock joke tell a story? What exactly is storytelling? American mythologist Joseph Campbell studied storytelling in great depth and discovered a pattern which he explored in his most influential work, The Hero with a Thousand Faces, published in 1949. Campbell dubbed this pattern The Hero's Journey and it has been fundamental in studying story structure and creating new narratives. Star Wars, for example, follows the hero's journey to a T. So does Harry Potter. Dan Harmon, of Community and Rick and Morty fame, adopted his own version of the hero's journey. He refers to this as a story circle. You need go, search, find, take, return, and change are the eight steps of a story. They don't always have to be in that exact order, though they typically are. Harmon writes, it's not that stories have to follow this structure. It's that without some semblance of this structure, it's not recognizable as a story. Steps can be out of order or skipped completely, but the more you stray away from the structure, the less likely your story actually works. For the purposes of this video, we'll be using Harmon's story circle to demonstrate storytelling because well, blah, 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 dub dub. So, does a knock knock joke tell a story? Knock knock. Who's there? Doctor. Doctor Who. New episodes on BBC One. Okay, that's our knock knock joke. Not the best, but that's the best our writers could muster. Now, let's apply Dan Harmon's story circle and see if it tells a story. Okay, so let's establish the protagonist. Number one, who's the you in this scenario? Well, that would be me. I'm the protagonist. Number two is the need. There's somebody knocking at the door and I need to know who's there. Number three, my go, is choosing to interact with this mystery person behind the door by asking who's there. Number four, the search, is me trying to discover who's on the other side of that door. At first, I only receive a cryptic response. This road of trials continues when I have to ask a follow-up question. Number five is the find. After that line of questioning, the mysterious person reveals who they are. But there's a catch, and that's the take, number six. What I find is what's actually behind that door, a punchline to a joke. This wasn't a house call, it was a setup, a prank. Number seven, the return. I'm still standing by the door and the mystery person is still on the other side, but there has been a change. Number eight, I learned that this was a joke. I understood the reference and the wordplay, and if I found it funny, I got a laugh out of it. Boom, there it is. We checked every box of that story circle. Awesome. We can find storytelling just about anywhere. But how does storytelling apply to the digital world? Can we apply storytelling to, say, a landing page? Let's check out this example. HelloTushy.com. This is Tushy's lead gen landing page. Let's see how Tushy tells their story. First and foremost, there's what we refer to as the hero banner. 
Its purpose is to grab and entice the visitor. Wow. It's done with visuals, an image, a video, concise copy, anything that establishes the narrative. Next is the hero title. The hero title is that opening line designed to hook the reader at first glance. It's an enticing tagline and or a thought-provoking question. And that's followed up with the hero copy. The hero copy heralds the user onward, reinforcing the ideas presented in the hero title and the visuals in the hero banner. Looking at the banner and the title and the copy, how would that make the user feel? What emotions would it evoke? Inciting an emotional response is essential to a landing page that converts. When looking at this landing page, it catches you off guard, it makes you chuckle. Humor is a great conduit to break the ice on a potentially sticky topic. Okay, we've taken our first glance at this landing page. Let's run it through our story circle. Our user is the protagonist. That's number one. And since the user is thrown straight onto the landing page, they're already at go. Number three. Remember, these elements don't have to be in order. So what happened to number two? I'm not going to make a joke about number two. That's too easy. The need in this story has yet to be discovered. The user is on a journey to discover whether or not they have a need to continue. Number four, search, is what they see in the hero scene. The banner, the title, the copy. Number five, the find. They discover whether or not they need to click that early CTA. They discovered their need. They're number two. Then number six, the take. Pay the price. I think it goes without saying that Tushy just doesn't give everything away for free. You literally have to pay for it. Number seven, the return. They're back to their daily lives, but there has been a change. Number eight, they have Tushy to keep their hiney shiny. Voila! We have a story. But sometimes, stories aren't that simple. What if the user finds that they need more information about your product or service before hitting that early CTA? Now the user's road of trials is going to be a little longer. What else could be done for the protagonist in the search for a more informed decision? Conflict and resolution. They're integral parts to every story. Without them, no story is complete. In a good landing page, the conflict is very obvious. It's clearly laid out, presenting data, facts, anecdotes, the missed opportunity, letting our protagonist know that there's a void to be filled. In Tushy's case, a crummy derriere. But there's hope, a light at the end of the tunnel, a counter argument to the data, a validation, an antidote to the anecdote. Getting your butt butt clean doesn't have to be a pain in the ass. You no longer need to succumb to using insensitive TP for your bunghole. A badass landing page always solves the problem and tells you how it does it. Conflict, resolution, problem, solution. But it doesn't oversell the resolution. It always emphasizes the problem statement and then lays out the answer. How? USP. Unique selling point. What makes you unique? What sets you apart? From an obvious USP, like we are cheaper than the other guy, or our stuff is bigger, better, stronger, to an alternative proposition, like Tushy. Stop wiping. Start washing. A good landing page presents the USP eloquently to serve as the ammunition that resolves the conflict. It presents the operation, showcasing the different offerings, tiers, or membership plans clearly so an informed decision can be made. And then there's social proof, reviews, testimonials, adding credibility. These elements of conflict resolution are stepping stones to the ultimate goal, conversion. This journey creates the need, inching the user to that final CTA. This landing page sequence is called chronology. Use any sequence that works best for your story to build a landing page that converts. There are some great examples in our blog on storytelling. Check it out here or in the link in the description below.
here's a trick of the trade. Offering incentives is a very effective tool for that final push. A free trial or a gift for signing up can help convince those who are still on the fence. Storytelling is immensely important in all aspects, but even more so in crafting that perfect landing page. I hope you liked our video in our new format. Like, share, subscribe, and tell us your story. Here's a parting thought. It's a little trippy. Your landing page is a story, but it's also a story within another story. For the user, your landing page is the call to adventure, and if they click through, that's them crossing the threshold into a new world. As one story ends, another begins.